Hello and welcome to the first of the Advanced Panel Pilot Ace tutorial videos. Within this tutorial video we'll be showing you how to implement a basic digital meter, alarms, a digital clock and a gradient background for several shape objects. Before we start you'll need to ensure that you've got a new project open and that your screen is ready to begin. So now that we're ready to begin I'm going to start by implementing the border. In order to do this, I'm simply going to use a rectangle and fill the screen apart from the border. So I'm going to name it background. Now I want my border to be 20 by 20 on all sides. So this rectangle needs to be 40 smaller in height and in width. The screen itself is 480 by 272. So the rectangle will need to be 440 by 232. And then we'll need to be positioned 20 away from the x-axis and 20 away from the y-axis. Now that we have our border, I want it to be gray. And I'm actually going to set the background color of the application to be black to give us a nice black border. Now that we have our border, I'm going to show you how to implement a gradient background on a rectangle in this case. So the first thing we need to do is to drag in a standard rectangle. And then right clicking on this, we should select add gradient fill and then linear gradient. As you can see, this will create an identical copy of the rectangle, but with a linear gradient applied to it. In this case, we don't need the old one, so I'm simply going to delete it. Now, this new rectangle we have is going to be used as a background for the label. So in this case, I'm going to call it label background. Now that we have our background created, I'm going to drag it roughly into position and resize it roughly. Uh, and next, I'm going to need to change the gradient colors. So instead of going from orange to white, I want it to go from orange to a slightly darker orange. So to create this, I'm going to take our old orange, add it to custom colors, and then create a slightly darker version of it by changing the hue here and add that to colors as well. When I'm done, I'll hit OK. Now, the first thing I should do, I didn't mean to change that color, is actually select the old one again. And here, select the new color as your secondary gradient color. So here we've got a slow gradient that is linear. And I'm actually going to need one more of these that I'm going to use as the background for my alarm icon. So I'm simply going to copy and paste a new one in. And for now, I'm just going to roughly resize this. Now that I have my two backgrounds, I'm going to implement the label, the digital meter, and another label underneath the digital meter, as well as the alarm icon itself. So for the labels, I'm simply going to use a text box, which I'll drag in here. This is actually going to be the title for the whole page, so I'll label it title text. And for the sake of this example, I'm going to give it the text water temperature, assuming that this is used to measure the temperature of water. And I'm going to resize it so that all of the text can fit. And there we go, we have our title. I'm just going to move this down slightly. So within here, we need to actually put our digital meter, which is going to be another text box, which I'll rename digital meter. And just so we can see what it's actually meant to do, I'm going to give it some example texts that will represent its values. In this case, its maximum value is going to be three digits preceding and one decimal place. So I'm going to give it that just so I know roughly how large it's going to be in reality. 
Also, since this value is important, I'm going to resize it so that it's easily readable. I'm going to go with a value of about 40 pixels, which should easily be legible. And next, I'm going to need to implement the units as well as the label underneath this value. So for the units, I'm going to simply drag in another text box and replace the text with degrees C as I've copy and pasted onto my clipboard. And I'll rename this text box units. And also resize it so that it fits nicely and then position it again roughly where I want it to be. We'll do more precise positioning later. Finally, we're going to need our label text box, which will go underneath, and I'll call label. For this, we'll assume that this text box is going to represent an explanation of where this particular measurement is located. In this case, we're going to say module house, and now we have our labels in our digital meter, although the digital meter itself is not yet set up. Next, we'll need to add our alarm icon to the screen. Now, as in the previous tutorial videos, you were shown how to import image resources. In this case, you'll find that you can actually click and drag the image directly from a folder in Windows Explorer into the project, and it'll automatically add the image resource, and it'll also add the image to the screen. So now I'll drag it in directly from the folder externally. As you can see, this has been added to the image resources automatically and the image itself is now there. Now that the image has been placed, we should ensure that it maintains its aspect ratio so that it doesn't look blurry. And then we want to resize it to fit this rectangle. At present, this rectangle's height is 99.75, so I'm just going to rechange that to 100 and set the width to 100 as well to make it square. So this actually isn't square, so I'm going to change the height to 100. Uh, actually, I'm going to change the height to 90, just so there's a bit of a border. And then I'm going to place it in the center of this rectangle, which is currently still too small. So I'm going to make it 110 by 110. And that seems to fit now. So the position of this rectangle is going to now be 260 by 70. And I'm going to reposition this to 260 in the x dimension. And I'm going to make it 80 in the y and that should be centered. So I'm going to resize this rectangle here to be the same size. So I'm going to give that 110 height. I'm actually going to resize its width just to 200 to make it neater. And give it an X position of 45 and a Y of 70. Now these values should all be aligned. I'm actually going to ensure, so its X position is 45, this should also have an X position of 45 to make sure it's aligned. And there we have it. So we have the basic layout. I'm actually going to shrink this alarm size a bit as well, it's a bit, bit on the big side. So I'll reduce the height to 80 and move its position in the Y direction and X direction to fit that. So if its width is now 98, I'll place it roughly in the middle. And there you have it. Our screen is now resized. So next up is simply adding the functionality. So the first thing we're going to need to do this is our hardware elements. The only hardware elements we require are an alarm output and a digital input, uh, sorry, an analog input. So if we scroll down to our hardware integration, we can drag in our alarm output along with our analog input. Now because I'm using the dev board I'm going to configure the analog input to be between minus 5 and plus 5. However you can set this to be whatever values you want and I'm going to use the channel 1 in this case. Uh, the alarm output 
I'm going to give an initial value of off and once again I'm going to be using the channel one. So now that these are added the only thing remaining is the functional elements. For this we're going to need a digital display which is used to display our digital meter and we're also going to need an alarm. So we'll start with the digital display. Now this is simple to add. You select your analog input. We only have the one at this point in time. Uh, and we want our scaling to range between 0 and 100 degrees C. The valid value range is going to be 0 to 100, which gives us the full value range. And the text element used to display it is going to be the digital meter. And we want one decimal place in this case. Finally, we're going to set up the alarm. The analog input that this element is going to be linked to is our only analog input at present. We want the full voltage scaling as we've set it for the digital display. And now we want our alarm output element to be linked to it. The indicator element is going to be our image here. So now whenever the alarm is on this image will be visible, otherwise it won't be visible. And we want the alarm to come on when we get to 70 degrees and above. Finally, we want automatic reset behavior. Now, the three options here, automatic will add hysteresis and automatically turn itself off when dropped below the value. Custom will allow for you to select a reset button that you can click in order to reset the alarm values. And the manual will allow for it to be reset simply by clicking on the same icon that is used to display the alarm. But for our instance, we simply want automatic behavior. Now we should have, and we'll test it by running the emulator, a digital display that now changes between 0 and 100 with the minus 5 to 5 analog input, and an alarm value that comes on when 70 degrees C is reached, and off again immediately when it drops below. As you can see, this also toggles the alarm output channel, which will be visible on your dev board if you have one, or direct through the pin on the SGD43A. Uh, as well as this, you get the alarm icon appearing on screen. Now that we have this working, we'll show you how to implement a digital clock as well. So in order to do this, the first thing we'll need to add is a text box, which is going to display our clock value. Here I'll just put in an example value, so the time now is 15.36 and I'm going to rename this digital clock and position it somewhere near the top here. Uh, and next I'm going to need to drag in the functional element that will implement the clock here is a date time display. Uh, and I'm going to rename this digital clock. Ah, I've already used that obviously, so I'll just call it clock. And the text element linked to it is digital clock. And there are several options with the formatting. Um, you can read all of these for further details, but in this case I simply want to display hours and minutes. So I'm going to give it the format HH colon MM which will give us a demonstration here and the current date time and then I'm going to apply this. So this should now enforce the date time into this text box here. So if we hit F5 to view that you can see that the time is now displayed in the top right. And that should update automatically.